I welcome you to this service of the Holy Eucharist during this season of Pentecost, the longest season in the church year. It commemorates the descending of the Holy Spirit on the followers of Christ and marks the beginning of the Christian church and its mission to the world. As we journey through Pentecost, may you be blessed by the Holy Spirit with good health and happiness as you share God's love with your family, friends, and those in need in our community and throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Collect for Transition Almighty God, you have called us, as you called those who came before us, into lively and holy ministry in this cathedral parish to be your light in this corner of the world. In this time of change, send, we pray, your Holy Spirit to comfort and guide us, to help us discover who we are and what we may become. As we prepare for a new shepherd of your flock, a minister in your house, grant us patience, discernment, and grace in all our uncertainties and bless our search for one to lead us as the church you call us to be through jesus christ our lord amen 
A reading from the first book of Kings. David slept with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David. The time that David reigned over Israel was 40 years. He reigned seven years in Hebron and 33 years in Jerusalem. So Solomon sat on the throne of his father David, and his kingdom was firmly established. Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of his father David only. He sacrificed and offered incense at the high places. The king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the principal high place. Solomon used to offer a thousand burnt offerings on the altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in, and your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked for this. God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I do now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall be arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor all your life. No other king shall compare with you. If you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your life. The word of the Lord. Psalm 111. Alleluia, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart, in the assembly of the upright, in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and splendor. His righteousness endures forever. He makes his marvelous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gives food to those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. 
For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In George Bernard Shaw's play, St. Joan, Charles, the Dauphin, heir to the French throne, complains to the mystical Joan. I don't want to be all those fine things you all have your heads full of. I want to be just what I am. Why don't you mind your own business and let me mind mine? And Joan says to him, what is my business? Helping mother at home? And what is yours? Petting lap dogs and sucking sugar sticks? I tell you, it is God's business we are here to do, not our own. And I have a message for you from God, and you must listen to it, even if your heart breaks with the terror of it. In today's collect, we heard the following. You have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin, and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work, and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Our collect for the day, as well as much of Western civilization literature, reminds us that God has some very real expectations of us and that we do and what we do, our actions and attitudes do matter. We cannot ignore or overlook the fact that God offers us a vision of what human life can be and should be. That vision has to do with shaping ourselves by living faithfully. And we do that most effectively by keeping God at the center of our lives. That vision has to do with living not for ourselves alone, but also for others, with a passionate concern for the poor and neglected. That vision has to do with the way we take care of the stuff of our lives and the people God places in front of us. Above all, that vision has to do with how we behave and who we become. In the final analysis, being faithful to God's vision of who we are created to be begins with us. Each one of us has the same choice. On one hand, we can choose to try over and over to live as God would have us live, to live faithful, honorable lives, no matter where such faithfulness may lead. 
On the other hand, we can simply put all that stuff on the back burner, do what the world and our own ideas and appetites tell us to do, and hope for the chance every now and then to be a nicer person. God loves us unconditionally, and God wants for us the fullest and the deepest life we can have. We are created in such a way that the very best that life has to offer is available to us most fully as we try to live God's vision of what it means to be a genuine human being. The way that Jesus lived required a choice from everyone who met him. Remember, Jesus did not force his will on people. Instead, he offered himself, and he lived with absolute integrity. People saw in Jesus something that caused them to have an inquiring mind, and they had to choose how they wanted to live their lives. 2,000 years later, it is the same for us. It does us no good to sit on the sidelines and shout that the world is bad. Instead, we are called, as Jesus himself was called, to transform ourselves to show and to tell the world what it looks like and how different it is to live as we are created to live. It is the call to that wholeness and completeness that living as we are created to live can bring. Yes, it is a challenge. And it can be hard at times. Nevertheless, this is the challenge we are called to accept. So today, we are being invited to remember two things. First, that God loves us, all of us, more than we can possibly imagine. And God wants for each one of us the best life possible. For this reason, God gives us, in Jesus, both a model of what human life can look like and the grace to embrace that life and live it fully. Second, on the fundamental issue of our own integrity, we are reminded that any challenge to the vision of human life that our faith offers is really about us. It is with ourselves that we begin, and nowhere else. Let me close with this blessing. May God bless you with this comfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships, so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people, so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer from pain, rejection, indifference, starvation, so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. May God bless you with enough foolishness 
to believe that you can make a difference in this world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done. And may the peace of God and the God of peace be with you forevermore. Amen. In this season of Pentecost, let us pray to the Lord with all our hearts and all our minds, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the peace of the world, that the spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the church, that it may carry forward the redemptive work of God, healing, feeding, sheltering, and caring for one another. Guide our bishops, Michael and Brian, the clergy, staff, and people of St. Michael's. Give us faith to follow where you lead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all those in positions of public trust, especially our president, our governor, and our mayor, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and well-being of all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all people who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, and all those who help loved ones, or livelihood have been affected by the coronavirus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the members of our cathedral family who have died and for their families in their grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our own needs and the needs of others. Remember and especially those in the military, teachers, and the service industries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Now I greet you in the name of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. Our service continues with the great thanksgiving. We offer this Eucharist to the glory of God in thanksgiving for the coming of Christ into our lives and into the life of the world. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, 
we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. In union, O Lord, with your faithful at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. Since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. The prayer of thanksgiving. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good people, our Eucharist has ended. As you go forth to continue your work in the world, I bid you, be of good cheer. Hold fast to that which is good. Love and serve the Lord with gladness and singleness of heart, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit and the blessings of God the Father who created us, God the Son who died for us, God the Holy Spirit who enlivens and makes us whole, be upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.